Hello and welcome to a Top 10 Kentucky Derby video. PTF and JK here. Very excited with uh, some news coming out of the weekend to have a new jumbled up Top 10. We've got some new names in there and excited to go over them and reveal them to you. Uh, definitely a lot of ways you can go at the top of this list. going to be interesting. We'll see if you agree with us and Eric DeCosta from In The Money Media, who constructed this list. Of course, we want to hear from you as well. Lots of ways to go with this top 10. Who would your number one be and why? That's the new comment contest. As for the old comment contest, we'll show Tom Espinoza up there, who made his case for deterministic, very impressive winner in the Gotham. We'll get to him in a little bit, a little tease of what we've got coming up. JK, this was a weekend that promised three Kentucky Derby prep races in the end, maybe as notable for who did not compete as for who did. There was more scratching going on than a house party in the Bronx. Wow, that was a good one, Pete. Yeah. In fact, that was so good that I'm going to give you two thumbs up. <laughs> you didn't even see that, did you? Nice little I did, trick. I, I did. It's a little something exciting. I worked out. Uh, no, I, I look, it's it, door knock and, and Danny Gargan were pretty happy uh, when they popped away from that gate that when they looked to their left, they didn't see speakeasy. When they looked to their right, they didn't see locked. So um, it, it was an unfortunate series of events, but luckily both of the horses uh, look like they're going to be competing sooner than later. So that's a good thing. We're putting them both on hold for now. Just a warning in advance. Neither of those runners you will see in our top 10. Locked was our number one. But boy, having missed two assignments now, definitely some questions about where he belongs. We'll, hopefully, we're going to get some news soon. Hopefully, we'll see him compete soon, and he can vault back up to the top of the standings. The way we're going to do this, we're going to show you uh, five through 10 first. We're going to put those numbers up on the screen and those names counting from 10 to five. You see Mystic Dan ran that big figure. Maybe was aided by the track at Oak Lawn. Catching Freedom, a horse, JK, I know you've had some interest in. Number eight, Conquest Warrior. We're going to come back to him in a minute. Hades, we've talked about before. Track Phantom, we've talked about before. Fierceness, he'll be competing next in the Florida Derby. Uh, another name that's been on this list that will continue to be on this list. Let's talk about Contest Warrior, though, and why he has now made an appearance on our In the Money Media Kentucky Derby Top 10. Yeah, he won a mile and eighth optional claiming race on Friday. Um, I believe that was March 1st. And uh, look, it was impressive. You know, he, got, he did it the right way. Uh, he, you know, he didn't get a number that's going to wow you over the top, win the Kentucky Derby tomorrow number. He got an 84 buyer. Uh, but he's a million-dollar city of light. He's trained by Kentucky Derby Hall of Fame winning trainer uh, in, in Suge McGahee. So I'd like to think that, you know, he'll likely show up for the Florida Derby and, and be one of those kind of newer horses that could take another step forward, especially if a horse like Hades or, or fierceness continues to do what fierceness has kind of done, uh, as so far this year, even though I did have Mike Rapoli on JK plus one, and he assured me that he had a conversation with fierceness and they're good now. And that fierceness is going to run a, a fierceness's race. But, um, I think conquest warrior was interesting to say the least. From the horse's mouth, literally, over there on JK Plus One. Yeah, it would be exciting to see Chuck McGahee with a derby contender once again. Definitely a trainer known for bringing them along a little more slowly, and they can get fast at the right time. Saw that uh, a few years ago with Orb in the Florida Derby. His previous form had been, uh, you would have said the same types of things. Has to get faster. Well, Conquest Warrior has to get faster, but maybe he can. Let's get to this top four. These are as ranked by our man, Eric DeCoster. He put uh, this new shooter, Deterministic, in the four spot. I love the way he won the Gotham. This figure came back at 93 on the buyer speed figure scale. But it was one of these things, like in his debut, JK, with the way he did it on this sloppy track, weaving in and out of horses, impressed me as much as the raw sort of form of the race suggests. This is a horse who just almost has to move forward off this race, doesn't he? And if he does, he's as fast as any three-year-old we've seen so far. Absolutely. And, and you'd like to think that there's probably more to offer from a horse like Deterministic. Um, I didn't think he got a great setup that day. He finished like a good horse. And wow, isn't it, uh, isn't it kind of a, a cool opportunity for Christoph Clement, who's eligible for the Hall of Fame this year, uh, and Joel Rosario, who's eligible for the Hall of Fame this year, to get that, that derby? 
uh, that Kristoff definitely deserves to have on his resume considering the rest of his career. I, I would actually have deterministic higher on this list. Uh, no offense to, to Eric DeCoster who makes this list for us, but I would have him a little bit higher. I thought he was exceptional uh, in the Gotham. I look forward to seeing him continue to move forward. You'd like to think there's another step forward for him. Eric loves him, I know, and I think maybe part of it is the Gotham not historically being a key Kentucky Derby prep race, but this is an unusual year and deterministic for me. Also, I probably would have been tempted to, to bump him up a spot or two. In our number three spot right now is Timberlake. He's been advancing through the ranks, a little bit of addition by subtraction this week with the, the lock news of him not competing, having whatever setback he had. You, I'm like, you speak on Timberlake because I know you've been a big fan from uh, the get-go. Yeah, another one that just got to take another step forward, but I believe that he will, right? He, he showed a bunch of talent as a two-year-old, and his comeback race in the Rebel was exactly what I think you would like to see from him. Kind of a workman-like, you know, nothing over the top where there, you'd feel like there's another step forward uh, for Timberlake. So we'll see where he shows up next. Uh, I, I would imagine it would be the Arkansas Derby. I suppose it could be uh, something like the Bluegrass. We'll see where, where Brad Cox ends up shuffling uh, his handful of horses, but I, I'm looking forward to Timberlake's next start. I think he definitely deserves to be in this top three. Number two, Sierra Leone. He's coming off that big win at the fairgrounds. I'll do my little reveal. This is the horse I would probably elevate to number one now. I know he has form that ties in closely with Dornick. Obviously, Dornick beat him in the Remsen. I contend Sierra Leone was better that day. I think Dornick was on the right part of the track. I felt like Sierra Leone more impressive in the comeback race than Dornick was. Do you think that I'm nuts that I would have had Sierra Leone as my number one if it was just the, the PTF list and not the full-on in the money list? Yeah, I'm not necessarily a doorknock guy, right? Doorknock, doorknock. I, I, he, to me, I, I agree with you. Sierra Leone. Um, then now, the look, they've helped each other's form, right? By Sierra Leone continuing to win and Doornick continuing to win, I think it helps them equally. Um, you know how I feel about Remsen winners. I think that a two-year-old. Uh, that runs a mile and an eighth at that time of the year is not the same horse profile that wins the Kentucky Derby. We'll agree to disagree on that. I, I just, and I, and I didn't learn anything about Dornick uh, on, on Saturday in the Fountain of Youth. He, he took, a, took advantage of a, of, a, of a scratch down field in a very comfortable pace scenario, and, a, and, and he did what he was supposed to do at one to five. I haven't learned anything about him yet. Maybe we will, uh, but I agree with you. I, I think maybe Sierra Leone and I, I wouldn't really argue with anyone who wanted to put deterministic that high on the list based off of that comeback race uh, and being undefeated at this point. So you don't like the Remsen, but the Gotham is going to produce the Kentucky Derby winner. We'll have to drill down on that on a future In the Money Players podcast when we have a bit more time. We've already revealed who the number one is on Eric DeCoster's In the Money media list. That is Dornick. And I think uh, Eric just giving this horse credit for coming back. And I think what Eric was doing, putting this horse number one, is, is believing the chatter that he was 80, 85% fit for this return to the races. Because on its face, J.K., this is not a, a the kind of effort that makes you think Kentucky Derby if, if this is a fully formed effort. He got an 88 buyer speed figure in this run. He looked okay. He did what he had to do, but it wasn't overly impressive to me. I get why Eric put the horse here trying to pump in that blue sky. But like you, I am much more comfortable doing that with trainers who we've seen successfully bring horses on the Derby trail before. Nothing against Danny Gargan. I remain a little bit skeptical about Dornick, but I understand why he is number one on this list right now. That's what we think. We want to hear what you think. Put in the comments who should be number one in this Kentucky Derby top 10. Tell us why. We will feature you on the next video. We're going to have more coverage coming up on the In The Money Media Network. We encourage you to check out our website, inthemoneypodcast.com, and we encourage you to uh, subscribe to this channel and click that bell for notifications so you can get all the videos we're doing. Going to be more coming fast and furious from now through the first Saturday in May. Until the next time, for JK, I'm PTF. May you win all your photos.